Peace and blessings. It is Carly Stevens Jr., a.k.a. Rakim Sekou. I want to talk about how we can know and understand when men are angry at their mothers. Okay? How we can know and understand when men are angry at their mothers. And this is a big thing because of how it actually impacts us as men, how it impacts families, how it impacts marriages and relationships. Um, Let's start out by understanding that the mother archetype in our culture is an archetype that is basically considered to be untouchable when it comes to criticism in many cases, when it comes to, you know, looking at as an accountable figure for the pain and hurt that might have been caused inside the family, okay? So it's not about in terms of whether the mother is guilty of anything or not. I'm saying from a cultural standpoint, it is considered to be taboo for us to criticize the mother archetype. And that's just a cultural thing, right? So the mother historically has been considered one of those untouchable archetypes where you, it's not really about criticism, but it is about praise and acknowledgement, you know, unconditionally for the most part. That's an important thing because, you know, right there, there's not a lot of space when it comes to looking at the mother figure and the mother archetype as someone who has even the ability to, you know, be somebody who could cause pain and cause hurt, you know, to her children or people in the family and that kind of thing. And this is the, the dilemma that a lot of boys have and then young men growing up and to be men have is that, you know, when you're a child, you interpret things the way you interpret them, you know? And oftentimes you'll see the mother as the author of your hurt, of your pain, of things you've gone through, things you're going through, but you don't really have any way of really talking about that, any way of kind of criticizing that. There was a video I was watching, um, it was on Instagram and it was a mother and she was talking to her husband and she was saying, our son told me that I'm a poor mother and that I shouldn't worry about being recognized on Mother's Day. And the father was like, what did he say? And she repeated it and that kind of stuff. And she was like a little bit frantic. And he's like, I know he didn't say that. So then the boy said, yeah, I said that. You know, he said it to the father. And the father then kind of like went off on the boy and said, well, how about if we forget your birthday? And how about if we forget Christmas? And, you know, how dare you say that to your mother? Where do you, who do you think you ought to say that? And, you know, the issue with that approach by the father towards his son is that he didn't really ask the boy, well, why did you say that? What was your reason for, for, for feeling the way you feel? How is it that you feel? What is it that your mother did to make you feel that way? And the reason why it's important to ask that is so that the adults and the parents in the home can work through particular issues because it might be something where the boy's just misinterpreting, like the mother is saying, hey, no candy until after dinner. And the boy might be thinking, well, that, you know, that means you're a poor mother. You're being mean to me. And then the father can sit down and, and talk about, well, here's, here's why this is the case. And I understand I felt the same way when I was a child. And, you know, I wanted candy first and that kind of stuff. So, but, the, you know, the father didn't give the boy any, you know, room to express how he felt. And the thing is, when it comes to raising children, you have to give children the opportunity to express how they feel. Again, it's not about the children being right and the parents being wrong. It's just about allowing people to voice how they feel and then working through those issues about having open communication, about building trust. So the child knows, well, if I feel a certain way, I can come to my mother, I can come to my father and talk about it. But, you know, in terms of the father's approach and the mother's approach as well, like she's kind of yelling and frantic and that kind of stuff. What, what happens is you, su you shut down trust and you shut down a level of, you know, a, you know, lines of communication between the family. And so now when the boy feels a certain way about the mother or the father or just things in general, he does, he's not going to feel like he can come to them and, and hear, you know, get, get supported or hear something that's rational. He's going to hear the mother being frantic 
or assume she's going to be frantic and the father's going to come down hard on him. So what happens as a boy, you shut down, right? You, you learn in that moment, oh, I can't talk to these adults, my parents, about how I feel because they're going to go crazy. They're going to go off and, you know, they're not going to care how I feel. They're going to castigate me and they're going to punish me and they're going to come down on me and they're going to take away my birthday and take away Christmas. Okay, I got it. So I can't express that to them. Again, going back, you need to understand that children have irrational feelings, but they're real. They're, they're how they feel, you know, and, and they, they need to be acknowledged. They need to be dealt with appropriately. So that kind of sets up what we're talking about, like, well, if the child can never express why he felt the mother was, you know, poorly mothering him, then he's got to carry that for the rest of his life. And the question is, well, where does he release that energy? So he suppresses it in the moment because he doesn't want to get in trouble, doesn't want to get punished more than he's already getting punished. So he, he pushes it down. And so the question is, well, what do you do with that energy? What do you do with, with those feelings? And the question is, well, you can't really do anything with them, not in the short term, because, you, you know, you're in danger as a child. Your father's going to come down on you. Your mother's going to yell at you, you know, be offended by the fact that you have feelings and you interpret something the way you interpreted it. There was another video I watched. The video, I, th I want to say it was take, took place in China. It was a young boy. He must have been five, maybe six. Really, really, you know, you know cute, kind of cute family. Husband, wife, the, 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 the son who's about five or six, and then the, a new daughter who's about seven months. And so they just, they're asking the, the child questions, and the mother's on the other side of the, the one-way kind of mirrored glass, like watching the interview. And the, they ask the child, well, which, which parent's your favorite? And the child said, I don't know. And they said, well, you know, how do you feel about your father? And he says, well, he's scary when he talks. You know, I'm, I'm scared of him when, he, when he's speaking. I, I, um, I don't want him to, to yell at me and that kind of stuff. And then, you know, they asked him, well, what, what would you like from your father? He said, well, I would like for him to speak to me softly, you know, speak to me gently. And they were like, okay. And they were like, well, how about your mother? And he said, well, I don't feel my mother likes me. And they showed the mother in that instant, you know, she's watching through the, the, the mirrored glass and she kind of started crying and she was surprised and all that kind of stuff. And they said, well, did you talk to your mother about that? And the boy said, well, she doesn't listen to me. You see what I'm saying? Um, and they said, well, what would you like for your mother to do? You know, if you could have it your way, what would your mother do? And the boy said, well, I, I would like for her to play with me. And then they kind of cut to where they're like filming the family in their apartment. And the boy is on the floor, you know, like laying down and whatever, and, and playing with his trucks and his toys all by himself. And the parents are kind of huddled around the, the, their daughter, the seven-year-old or seven-month-old daughter, and they're kind of focused on that. So they showed a repeated clips in different days where the, where the boy's playing by himself with his toys and that kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? And so the boy got emotional while he was talking and he kind of covered his face and asked the interviewer to stop doing the interview. But, you know, again, this is another thing. Like the boy feels like the mother doesn't like him. And again, those feelings could be coming from anywhere. It's not automatically, oh, the mother did something wrong. We're not really focused on that. That's not the focus. The focus is this is how the boy feels and that should be addressed. We should be able to talk to him and say, hey, you know, why do you feel your mother doesn't like you? Or why do you feel you can't talk to her? Or, you know what I'm saying? Or, or what is your dad saying with, that's so loud, et cetera, et cetera. But there was no space given for the boy to express that. So if they didn't do that interview, he would have grown up his entire life having these feelings about his mother, but those feelings never really being addressed and, and you know, more than likely. And so the point is, like, people are wondering, like, hey, how do you know when a, when a boy grows up into a man and he's still angry at his mother? Well, it, he's, he's channeling that anger towards his wife and towards his girlfriend and towards his partner. A lot of women I coach, they come to me and say, hey, Rakim, I don't understand. 
why my boyfriend is so angry. Like he's he's abusive. He's angry. He's you know, what I'm saying like it's it's almost irrational. And as a result, I'm kind of walking on eggshells around him because I don't want to piss him off. And the answer is, well, there's a there's a probability he might have some unresolved anger towards his mother that he can't talk to her about because the mother archetype is off limits. But the wife archetype is not, you know, a husband and a wife, you know, especially when you look at like Christianity and religion, they kind of put the husband above the wife. You see what I'm saying? And so the, the man feels entitled to be able to, you know, go off on his wife and vent to his wife unsolicited and, you know, to be abusive because that's the structure you know, in society and in, in religious, from a religious context. So he's venting all this to you. He's carried it all his life. He's had this anger towards his mother, which is going to, you know, equate to anger towards women. And he's going to have this irrational anger towards you. He's going to have a lack of patience with you. Like he's not going to really be able to have tolerance for the things you're saying, the things you want, the things you desire. He's going to blame you for his pain. A lot of women say to me like, yeah, like, I did this and that, and he's like saying that's uh, I'm being disrespectful or I'm being abusive towards him or, you know, I'm causing him pain or something. And I said, and I, I try to explain like, no, he's already in pain. He's just saying that he needs to blame you for that. And again, we're, we're talking about possibilities here, right? I'm not taking away women's responsibility in terms of showing up for their man in a particular way, their husband in a particular way, and treating him with respect and those types of things. But when you see an irrational anger, when you see you know, a man who's an alcoholic or he's addicted to video games or he can't listen to what you have to say or he's angry at you or he doesn't trust you or he's insecure, you see all these irrational things that a grown man normally wouldn't be doing, you know, like extreme emotional unintelligence. You see what I'm saying? Then we got to look at his relationship with his mother. Is there something that he went through with her where he couldn't express it? And, you know, these are some of the signs, you know, him being upset, being angry all the time, him not having the ability to kind of like hear you as a woman, to hear you express how you feel. Because when he was a boy, nobody ever like listened to what he had to say and how he felt, especially the mother. So he's, his tolerance for a woman coming at him and explaining what, what she wants and explaining how she feels is very low. He's not able to, you know, what we call hold space for her. He's got a very low level of emotional maturity. He just can't do it. It's, it's like scratching a chalkboard, you know, to his soul. And you're like, and women are like, man, what's going on? Like, what's up with this dude? Well, that's what it is. He's carrying childhood trauma. He's carrying childhood anger forward into his marriage and relationships. And, you know, you weren't able to see that as a woman because you're dealing with your own trauma and, and X, Y, and Z. And so you all end up coming together. And, like, it, it turns into this situation where you're just not able to come together as a solid couple. You're not able to really create real intimacy, real trust, real communication. And as a result, the marriage suffers. And then what's worse is the children you end up having, if you have children, they end up suffering because, well, as adults, you don't know how to communicate or hold space for them. So as a man who grew, grows up in that scenario, he's looking at his, his son, for example, and saying, well, I, no one held space for me. That must, that must be how you raise children. So he ends up being kind of like that overbearing father and out of touch and, you know, not willing to listen to what a child has to say and that kind of stuff. And so the cycle repeats. And that's where we find ourselves in a, in a scenario where the cycle repeats over and over again because, you know, we are not stepping outside of that kind of cultural phenomena where we don't allow the children to speak their truth and talk about their feelings. And so, you know, we see it happen over and over again. So something to consider, something to look at. We'll come back and talk more about this topic, but let me know what you think below. Feel free to subscribe and check us out in the future. Peace. Talk to you later, man.